All right, what's going on guys? So in this video, we're gonna learn how to take these photos of Dwight Howard and turn it into this. All right, the first step is to cut and clean. You're gonna do this by going to the quick selection tool and then going up to select subject. And then what Photoshop will do is create a rough outline of your subject automatically. And then what you have to do is just add back those places that the algorithm might have missed all right, so now that we have the cut portion of step one done, now it's time to clean them up. So that means just sharpening them a little bit. So I've already sharpened the two on the right. Now I'm gonna sharpen the one on the left. So we are gonna do this by going to filter and then scrolling down to reduce noise. And then you can see the adjustments that I make. This is my preset for reduce noise, but you can have your own. Next we have camera raw filter. So you can go up to filter, scroll down to camera raw filter. And then you can see that I adjusted the texture and clarity. And then if you want, you can pause and see the other adjustments that I made to highlights, shadows, as well as the whites. All right, let's take a look at the top left-hand corner here. So you can see that the black background is still on the net. And it's really, really hard to mask out that, and it takes a lot of time. So what you can do is you can double-click the top layer. So you're going to have to duplicate your layer. Double-click the top layer. You can move the left slider to the right. And what that does is it gets rid of all of the darkest spots on your image. So now you have two layers. One layer where the darkest spots are erased. And then you have an underneath layer where the darkest spots are in place. So what you're going to do is you are going to erase those dark spots where the net would be on the underlying layer. All right, so now we have step two, the black and white effect. You can see I already did this effect with these two Dwight Howards. This can be done pretty simple. All you have to do is make a black and white adjustment layer and then paint on where you wanna see the black and white. Once this was done, I added some highlights on the outside of my players by adding a brightness adjustment layer and then increasing the brightness. All right, step three is to create these player outlines. So you're gonna to wanna to duplicate your player. So you can hit Command J and duplicate it and then go to the effects button and go to blending options. And then once you've lowered the fill opacity, you're gonna to wanna to add a stroke. And as you can see, the stroke adds a thin yellow line around your duplicated layer. All right, so now is one of the most important parts of this design and it's the paintbrush effect. This can be done by using brushes that I will link in the description to first create a large brush behind all three players and then use smaller brushes that match the colors of the players in order to create the effect of the color coming off the players. Step five is lighting and shadows. Before I get into lighting and shadows, I wanna say if this video gets 75 likes, I'll drop the PSD file so you guys will have all the overlays and effects that I used within this video. All right, so back to lighting. The blue in the background was too bright for me, so I added a black overlay in the top right-hand corner as well as the bottom left-hand corner. You can do this by going to the paintbrush tool and then increasing the size and then decreasing the hardness and then you can just paint on where you want your overlay to be. And you can always lower the opacity if the effect is too strong for you. All right, after I did that, I added a shadow for the three players and I did that by adding a black dot with a hardness at 100 and then I changed the perspective as well as I distorted it in order to stretch it across the three players. You can do this by right clicking on your circle that you made and then going to perspective or distort. After that was done, I added a Gaussian blur and you can do this by going up to filter, blur, and then go to Gaussian blur. And what Gaussian blur does is it adds a blur onto that black dot you just created so it looks like a shadow. All right, step six is overlays and effects. So I added this black and white overlay, and then I changed the blending mode to exclusion so that the white particles were the only thing you could see from the overlay. After I did that, I went up to image and went to hue and saturation, and then I changed the hue and saturation to the yellow color that you see in the image. All right, this next part is my favorite part. It is color correction, and it does wonders on this design right here. So the first thing I did was add a color lookup and then I used the color lookup three strip. If the effect is too strong for you, you can always lower the opacity. And then I decided to add a gradient map. And then I changed the gradient map so that it was black and white. 
and then I scrolled through the blend modes to see which one I thought looked the best. I ended up going with soft light and then I reduced the opacity to around 70 to 75% because I thought the effect was too strong. I also added a curves adjustment layer and then you can see the changes that I made if you just rewatch the video here. All right, on to one of the most important parts of this particular graphic is the second color lookup, which is late sunset. So I put late sunset on and then I reduced the opacity down to around 90%. The color lookup late sunset makes your image a little bit darker. So I increased the light with brightness and contrast, but just by a little bit. You can add a brightness and contrast layer by hitting the new adjustment layer and then going to brightness and contrast and then it will pop up with two sliders and you wanna increase the brightness. I then added some text and this is the final result. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please feel free to leave me a like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and as always, have a good one.